Welcome to video one of your three-part vinyasa series. This video is going to go over the basics of a vinyasa sequence. We're going to start to link our own individual breath with movement, and we're just going to get the basics of this moving meditation down. Remember, this is a three-part series, so come back to this video whenever you need to. We're going to start on our backs for this. So go ahead and lay down onto your mat, and you're going to bring your feet right underneath the knees, arms down by the sides. Bring the shoulder blades together slightly so that you feel a slight lift through the heart space and you feel a little support underneath the backside. Gently close the eyes and start to press through the back of the head gently and let the shoulders relax onto the mat. Soften the ear, behind the ears, soften that space between the brow and just start to connect to your breath, bringing some awareness to your inhale and your exhale. And there's nothing forced here. We're just simply being aware of our breath. Start to notice how the breath moves, not just up and down, but three-dimensionally, expanding the rib cage in all four directions. Notice how each breath is unique. And within each breath, each inhale and each exhale is unique. And as you stay with the inhale and the exhale, notice how it starts to soften the body from the crown of the head through the shoulders, into the backside, down into the feet. See if you can focus more on your exhale than your inhale. Working on deepening each one with each cycle. Finding your pause at the top of your inhale and that pause at the bottom of your exhale. Remember that each individual body is unique and therefore each individual breath is going to be unique for each person. Rather than focusing on breath to movement, just focus on breathing. Linking breath to movement will start to organically come when we find that moving meditation. As you inhale, start to reach your arms up over your head. Open the eyes. Look up to the sky. Spin your palms to the sky. Stretch. Let your low back come off the mat. And then bring the arms back down by your sides. As you do that, press into the arms. Start to elevate your hips just one inch off the ground. Good. Gently release the hips. Inhale. Reach the arms up. Exhale, bring the arms down. Start to lift the hips. One more inch this time, pressing through the arms and the back of the head to bring the hips up. Release the hips. One more time. Inhale, reach the arms up. Stretch through the waist. And exhale, bring the arms down. Pressing the hips up as you press the shoulders into the mat. Start to squeeze the glutes in center through the each heel of each foot. Imagine a yoga block in between the thighs. Take a breath in, squeeze the glutes a little harder, and then slowly release hips to the mat. Pull your knees into your chest. Wrap your arms around your shins. Bring your forehead into your knees. As you release, take your left leg down to the mat. Pull your right knee in towards your chest. Release your head to the ground. Good. Take a few ankle circles with that right foot in one direction and switch directions. Just warming up the joints one by one. Keep flexing through your left foot. You're going to release your grip on your right knee. Start to open the knee like tree and then spin the leg down so that the feet meet. The legs are straight. 
then pull the knee back in towards your chest. Start to create these hip circles with the right knee, noticing what you feel and where you feel it. There might be a pop or a click, and that's okay. We're just warming up the hips. Keeping your left hand on the left hip to stabilize, bringing some awareness to that opposite side. Two more in this direction, keeping both feet flexed to protect your knees. And then start to switch directions. So taking the toes out to the side, bending the knee, and noticing what has to happen to reverse that movement. Continuing to just breathe as you breathe. Isolating the awareness right into that right hip. Last two. Beautiful, pull that last one in towards the chest, pulling the knee in. And switch out the legs, flexing the right foot, pull the left knee into the chest, feel that gentle stretch. And then release your grip and start to create those hip circles on your left side. Again, your right hand can be placed on the right hip just to keep that hip stable. Moving with some rhythm, not too fast, not too slow. Isolating that movement again, right into that hip. Three more. Last two. One more rotation in this direction, and then switch directions. Bring the toes in, drawing that knee in. Three more in this direction. Just to counter that rotation, last two. And last one, pulling both knees into your chest. Bring your forehead in towards your knees and let that bring you up to a seat. From here, scoot back to the middle of your mat and extend your legs out. Sitting up so that you feel both of your sit bones and your butt bones on the ground. Bring the hands to the tops of the thighs and if the knees are slightly bent, that's okay. Just relax the legs down. As you inhale, I want you to reach your arms up overhead. As you exhale, just bring the hands right to the shins or framing the legs with the hands. Just let your head drop down. Pulling the belly in gently. Let the shoulders relax. Good. Inhale. Reach the arms up. Exhale, fall towards the legs, not forcing the stretch, just noticing where we feel that tension. Two more times, inhale, lift the arms, lift the waist. And exhale, drop over the legs and rest. One more time, inhale. And exhale. Good. From here, I want you to bring your hands behind your hips. Fingertips can face out or in, and I want you to take your feet as wide as the mat. From here, you're going to use your hands to support, and we're just going to start to tick-tock the knee side to side, so keeping the feet flexed. Each time you roll to the opposite side, that opposite hip is going to come up off the mat. And here, we're just continuing to work into the joints of the knees, the ankles, and the hips. Let your knees fall to the right. Keeping both feet flexed, start to shift up so that you're sitting up, and then using the hands to frame that right foot, start to shift over, stretching out that hip. Notice where you feel it. Take a breath in, lift the chest, and exhale, fall to the leg. Good. Inhale to come up to your center, and exhale, shifting back to your main starting point. Take an inhale, lift up. Exhale, drop the knees over to the left. Starting to shift over that left leg. Inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, stretch over the left knee. Good. Inhale, find that rise in the chest. Exhale, find that depth in the stretch. Good. Inhale, come back to center. And exhale, just pause. Beautiful. From here, cross the ankles, shifting over the legs, come to a tabletop position. Setting up our foundation once again. Make sure the hands are spread wide. And you want to spread the fingertips wide, but then allow them to just kind of relax on the mat and grip the mat so much that the nail beds of your fingers turn white. Keep a slight energy through the hands as you find that energy in the arms. Make sure that you have the shoulder and the elbow and the wrist stacked so that the shoulder girdle is nice and safe. Make sure the knees are not too far back or too far forward. We want them to just... Stack right underneath the hips. 
tuck the toes under. And from here, I just want you to start to shift your hips back towards your heels, stretching out the arches of the feet. And then you're going to shift forward, taking the shoulders over the wrists to create some stretch through the wrists. Do that again. Shift the hips back towards the heels. And then take the shoulders over the wrists, keeping energy through the hands and through the feet, keeping the belly strong for a nice foundation. Good. Shift forward over the wrists. Shift back to the heels one more time. Take it over the wrists. Shift your hips to your heels. Good. Take your arms forward. I want you to tent your fingertips. So that means rising up onto the finger pads. And then allow the forehead and the chest to melt. Stretch. Good. Inhale. Come back to your center. Back to your tabletop position. Reset. This time bring the tops of the feet flat. Take a breath and let it go. Flip the heels of your hands so that your fingertips face towards your knees. And the hands can be turned out a little bit depending on how tight your wrists might be to start. You're just going to gently shift the hips back to the heels as you press through the heels of the hands. Let the head relax down between the arms. If it feels good to kind of shift in and out of this, you can. Otherwise, just find a nice still stagnant pose. Good. Coming back to your center. Shake that out of the wrists. And come back to a tabletop position. So we want to create this nice foundation through the low rib cage. So a lot of times in tabletop, we find ourselves here. Too much hyperflexion through the back. So we, or I'm sorry, too much extension through the back. So we want to pull the low ribs in, pull the belly in, and find that nice strong foundation. From here, start to drop your gaze, start to look between the legs, push through the heels of your hands, finding that cat round spine, pulling the belly button into the spine. Shake your head no. Good, come back to a neutral position, and then rather than dropping the belly, Try stretching the belly down as you lift the heart and then imagine pulling the heels of the hands towards the knees, cow face pose. Good, moving slowly back into cat. And through to cow, breathe as you breathe. Finding that cat round spine and coming back through to cow. Find a neutral position. Let's try linking breath to movement. As you inhale, start to lift the chest. Cow. As you exhale, round through the spine. Cat. Try to hold the exhale. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. On your own breath, do two more rotations, just noticing that link of your own breath to your own movement. Nothing forced, just moving your body with your breath. Find one more rotation on your own, keeping a nice strong foundation, and then finally returning back to a neutral position. Good. From here, start to pull your right knee into the chest. Take a few hip circles on this right side. Good. From here, Start to kick the heel straight back behind you so that the heel is in line with the hip, pushing into that right hand, reach your left arm forward. As if you were shaking someone's hand, reach for someone, and then pull the low ribs in as you get strong through that right hand. Good, release and switch sides. Just notice what has to happen. Take your left heel back, toes in line, heel in line with the hip, lean into the left hand, start to reach your right arm forward as if you were shaking someone's hand. Lifting the bicep up by the ear so we create some space through that shoulder. Press through the back heel as you reach through the right hand. And release. Good. Take that right leg back, second set, take the left arm forward. This time I want you to point the toes. Start to pull your heel in towards your glute, keeping your left hand where it is, and then just extend the toes back. Do that two more times. Now we're getting into that hamstring. Good. Keep your balance. If you wobble or fall, that's okay. Good. Start to extend those toes back. Release your left hand. Release your right foot to the mat with the leg straight. Pressing through the ball of the foot. Stretch out that calf. Good. Return 
back to your tabletop position, switching sides. Take that left leg back, heel in line with the hip, pushing through the left hand to reach the right arm forward. Good, start to point your back toes, same thing. Pull heel in towards the glute, and then extend the toes back. Two more times. Good, keeping the body nice and strong with that foundation. Good, then extend the toes back, release your right hand, release the ball of the left foot to the mat, press through the heel, let your chin drop down, relax the neck. And return back to your center. Beautiful. From here, I want you to walk the hands forward just a couple of inches, a little bit further than the shoulders. And I want you to take your hips, keeping your knees bent, start to lift your hips up towards the ground. Start to melt your chest so that the ears come towards the biceps, preparing for our downward facing dog. Here, if you feel okay, you can start to straighten the legs, but I encourage you to keep the knees bent. If we're finding ourselves too locked up in our chest, start to think about pushing into heels of hands to melt the heart. Here, start to pedal out each heel, alternating, straightening each leg, looking underneath each shoulder. Good. Take a look at your hands and maybe spin the hands out just a little bit so you feel some more support. If you have tight shoulders, you can take the hands slightly wider, but not much. And then drop down to your knees, coming back to a tabletop. Inhale, lift the chest, coming to cow. Exhale, downward facing dog. Tuck the toes, send the hips up, and melt the heart towards the thighs. Let's do that again. Come through, down to tabletop. Inhale, lift up for cow. Exhale, downward facing dog. Send the hips up, melt the chest, let the forehead relax. One more time, back to tabletop. Gently release knees. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, downward facing dog. The whole body starts to move together. Good, from here, step your feet forward just a few inches and come into the middle of your mat. Again, keeping the knees bent, shifting the weight into the heels. Start to take a ragdoll shape here, so hooking elbows and allowing the head to be heavy. Bring some awareness to the feet and where your weight distribution is and see if you can start to activate the tripod of your feet. So the big toe mound, the pinky edge in the center of each heel. From here, release your hands to the ground and just shake your head no. Support the shoulders with your fingertips. Nod your head yes, releasing tension through the neck. And then just exhale and breathe. Let gravity do its job here by creating some space through the spine, some space through the neck. Good, from here, start to find some activity. So straighten the legs, bringing the hands right below the knees, finding this halfway lift shape. So I use my hands on my shins to protect my low back and find a nice neutral position in the spine. Pulling the belly in, I press my shins into my hands and my hands into my shins, the gaze goes slightly forward. From here, drop over the legs into your forward fold. And if your hands don't touch the ground, that's okay. They don't need to touch the ground in order to feel a stretch. Just find that tension point and pause there. Again, inhale, take a halfway lift. Belly in, body moves together. Exhale, stretch over the legs. Good, find a halfway lift once again, and then this time bring your hands to your hip creases. Let that bring you up to a standing position. Release the hands down by your sides, palms open. Take an inhale. And exhale, just settle into this standing shape. Look down at your feet. Make sure there's some energy through the feet and let that energy kind of rise into the belly and then relax the shoulders. Just pause, just take a breath. Feel yourself standing with some power. Good, from here I want you to reach forward so that the palms face as if you were holding a yoga block and then find Tadasana, mountain pose. So arms come about shoulder width distance apart. Palms are gonna face in. We're still holding that yoga block for slight energy with the arms and then pull the belly and reach up as you center down through the each heel. Good, bring your palms to touch. Just draw them through to your heart center. Bow your chin to chest. Good, we'll move together. Release the arms, reach out, reach up. Find Tadasana, bring the palms to touch this time. Exhale, hands come through heart. One more time, inhale. 
and exhale. Close the eyes, pause. Just notice the energy in the body. Release the hands, open the eyes. Inhale, reach up, bring your palms to touch. This time, take a little side body stretch to the right, centering down through each heel. Coming back through center, lifting out of the waist and over to the left. Good, come back to center and fold over the legs. If you need to, bend the knees and release your head. Good, we'll connect the movement. Take that halfway lift. So hands come to the shins, finding a neutral spine. This time we'll step back to plank. So plant your hands underneath your shoulders and walk your feet back. Adjust the hands and the feet so that the hands again are underneath your shoulders. The feet are about hip width distance apart. And then I want you to find more energy through your index finger and your thumb mound as you push the earth away, lift through the back of the head. Get strong and then just release to the knees first. Look forward. Think about pulling the elbows back behind you as you come all the way down to your belly. Walk the tops of the feet down. Walk the hands back just a couple of inches. Squeeze your glutes. Most of the time in Cobra, our hands are too far forward. I see this a lot in my classes. This is not finding any action and we're finding a crunch through the spine rather than our extension. So we want the hands to be back so that we can actually work our back muscles. So the hands come right almost to the bottom of your rib cage sometimes and then the elbows want to pull together, almost if you squeezing something with your elbows. And then start to pull your belly button off the mat, get strong through your legs, inhale, lift up, cobra pose. Exhale, release, forehead towards the ground. Just notice what you feel, moving the chest up, inhale, squeeze the glutes. Exhale, forehead to the ground. Do that two more times with your breath. One more time, inhale. And exhale, this time press back to your child's pose. So you're gonna open your knees as wide as the mat, big toes come to touch, and the arms stretch out for, forward as your forehead comes to the mat. And here, just notice what you feel. Notice how the breath can move here and expand. Good, return back to a neutral position, a neutral tabletop, and then start to shift back into your downward facing dog. Walk your hands forward a couple of inches, make those little adjustments on the mat for your hands and your feet. And throughout our practice, it might change, that's okay. Shifting forward to plank here, Make sure the shoulders are stacked over the wrist. Lift through the back of the head. Hands and feet shouldn't have to move much between down dog and plank. So take a moment here to kind of shift forward and back, seeing if you can do that without moving your hands and your feet. One more time, shift forward and shift back, letting the heels just be light. Good, bend your knees, step your feet towards your hands coming back to the middle of the mat. Find a halfway lift as you arrive, inhale. Exhale, stretch over the legs, pause. Find that halfway lift, take a breath. Let that bring you up to a standing position. Hands are down by your side. Beautiful, connecting the movement now. Inhale, reach up. And exhale, hands will come through heart. Again, inhale, reach up, palms press. This time, stretch to the right. Over to the left, and back to center. Extend out of the waist, inhale, and exhale, fold over the legs. Good, take that halfway lift. Step back to plank, plant the palms. Walk your feet back, pause. Release the knees to the mat. Shift into the wrists, come all the way down to your belly. Again, tops of the feet flat. Moving the hands back if you need to. Inhale, lift the chest, and exhale, lower the chest. One more time, inhale, lift the chest, and exhale, lower the chest. Good, press yourself up through tabletop into downward facing dog. Send the hips up as you met, let the forehead melt. Take a breath, and just notice what you feel. Good, bend your knees, step your feet towards the top of your space this time, coming up towards the top of your mat. 
Taking a halfway lift, inhale, and exhale, stretching over the legs. This time we'll add on. Take that halfway lift, let that bring you up to stand. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, bring the hands through heart. Good, inhale, reach the arms up, palms press, and stretch over to the right. Over to the left, and come back to center. Good, this time I want you to shift into your right foot, start to pull your left knee into your chest, finding your balance for our first time. So notice what needs to happen. Think about the hips, make sure that right hip is pulled over that heel. Standing strong on that right leg, pull the left knee in, and just take some ankle circles here. And if you fall or wobble, that's okay. You will just get back in. Good, pull the knee in. And release, switch sides. Shifting into that left foot, pull your right knee into your chest. I interlace my hands on the knee so I can use that as some leverage. And then draw that left hip back ever so slightly so you have a nice strong left leg. Good, take some ankle circles with that right foot. And switch directions, just setting your eyes on something still and breathing. If you hold your breath, it does not help, I promise. <laughs> pull that knee in and release. Good, feel both feet on the ground. Inhale, reach your arms up. And this time we'll fold over the legs, bow, uttanasana, forward fold. Good, take a halfway lift. And now we're starting to link that movement, plant the palms, step back to your plank. Inhale, pause. Exhale, knees to the mat, come all the way down. Tops of the feet flat, inhale, lift the chest. And we meet in downward facing dog. Release the chest and tuck your toes, pressing through tabletop and back into downward facing dog. Again, make those little adjustments with your hands and your feet. Good, take a breath in and let it go. Good, this time I want you to shift. So reach your right leg up towards the sky, bringing the heel back in line with the hip. Point the toes and see if you can lift it one more inch without compromising the left hip. And then bend the knee, start to pull the knee in towards the chest. And then reach the right leg right to the sky. This time I want you to use your core, step your foot to a wide lunge. And if you need, use your hand to bring that foot up. Turning the toes out to face about one o'clock, bring your back knee down. Shifting onto the fleshy part of that knee. And then take your left hand out a couple inches so that you can create some space. And then bring the right palm to the top of your right knee and find a gentle twist here. So pushing into that left hand to lift the heart. Good. Come back to your center. Stack the hands underneath your shoulders. Pick up that back knee. Reach the right leg up. And release it to the ground. Switching sides. Left leg goes high. Inhale. Using your core, bring the knee into the chest. So shifting those shoulders over the wrist, creating some core activation. Lift the leg up, and then using that same core body, use that to step wide to your runner's lunge, turning the toes out and setting up the shape on this side. Bring the back knee down. If it's more comfortable for the top of the foot to be flat, that's okay too. If you need to fold up your mat for a bad knee, that's okay too. Take your right hand out to the side to create some space, and then the palm of the left hand comes onto the knee to create some friction to twist. Coming back to your center, tuck the toes, sweep the left leg high, and release, downward facing dog, stretch. Take an inhale, and let it go. Good, bend your knees, step your feet towards your hands. Inhale, take a halfway lift. Exhale, stretch over the legs. Take that halfway lift, let that bring you up to stand. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, bring hands through heart. Release the arms down by your sides. Inhale, reach up once again, stretch to the right. Linking the movement, exploring each shape over to the left. Beautiful, come back to center, pause. Pull your left knee into your chest, pause. Good, from here, start to open the knee and take the heel right to the calf. 
So a little tree prep. We just want to feel that left knee pressing out and what it feels like to balance on one leg. Again, if you wobble or fall, who cares? We're just balancing on one foot. Setting your eyes on something still, just bring your hands to heart or down by your sides. Start to press your left heel into your right leg and notice what you feel. Good, release that. Both feet on the ground, reach the arms up and pull the right knee into your chest. Good, so set up your balance, start to open that knee, taking the heel to the calf. My left side's a little trickier, so I'm always gonna wobble a little bit on my left side. I keep this left leg nice and strong though, and I just have to focus a little bit more on this side. And then bringing hands to heart, or just gently bringing the arms down by your sides. Just balance, focus, breathe. Notice what has to happen. Good, release that. Reach the arms up and bring your hands to heart. Remember, balancing can be tricky, especially if we have our minds on other things. You always wanna set your eyes on something still and then not try so hard. Inhale, reach the arms up. Good, exhale, let's come back to the flow. Fold over the legs, take a halfway lift here. Step back to your plank. Good, drop to the knees first. Inhale, lift up through the back of the head and come all the way down to your belly. Good, tops of the feet flat. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, release, tuck the toes, coming through tabletop, downward facing dog. Good, inhale, reach the right leg up. Bend the knee, pull the knee into the chest the knee in towards the nose. Inhale, reach the right leg up, shift. Good, step wide to that runner's lunge and pause. Again, make those little adjustments, back knee comes down again. And you can stay here and take that twist once again, or adding on, bringing the top of that left foot flat, and just like we did in the beginning of class, start to activate your hamstring and pull your left heel in towards your glute. Taking that right arm up, you can just take this open twist or start to reach back for the foot. And if you can't reach the foot, that's okay. These are all just part of the progression. This is just a little bit more of a quad stretch and it's also a little bit of a twist. Good, release that. Controlling that release and wherever you are, pick up your back knee, sweep the right leg high and release, downward facing dog. Notice the difference between the right and the left side. Good, switching sides, left leg reaches up. Bend the knee, pull the knee into the chest. Good, leg reaches high and step wide to that runner's lunge. Again, turning the toes out, bring that back knee down and then take whichever variation. So push into that right hand, start with the twist. If you'd like to take it to another place, pull that right heel in. And if you'd like to take that to another place, reach that left arm up and back for the foot. Again, I'm not, if I can't reach the foot, it's no big deal. We're just pulling that heel in, getting strong through the hamstring, and then keeping this right glute strong to protect the hip. Release that. Pick up that back knee, sweep the left leg high, and release to downward facing dog. Take a breath. And release. Good, bend your knees, step your feet towards your hands. Inhale, take a halfway lift, and exhale, stretch. Good, take that halfway lift, let that bring you up. And inhale, reach the arms up, and exhale, bring the hands to heart. Just pause here in the standing meditation for a moment. And then release the hands down. Reach those arms up, palms touch. Take that stretch to the right. Over to the left. And come back to center. Shifting the weight back into that right foot, pull your left knee into your chest, finding your balance. This time, opening for tree once again, you can keep the heel where it was, or you can bring that heel to the inner thigh if your hip allows. Either way, we're just balancing on one leg. So the heel comes to the inner thigh or to the inner calf, and again, pressing knee, pressing foot and leg together. Bring the hands down, bring the hands to your heart. Maybe even bring the hands overhead.
Good, release that. Hands to heart, take an inhale. Exhale, just let it go. So good, inhale, reach those arms up. Shift with that right knee. Good, right knee pulls in and set up tree on this left side. So again, bringing the heel to the inner thigh or to the calf. The reason why we wanna avoid the knee joint is because we can push the foot into the knee and put ourselves at a little bit of a risk for injury. So again, always to the calf or above the knee. And again, it doesn't really matter because we're just standing on one leg once again. So the foot placement really doesn't make a difference. Again, find your balance, just breathe. And once you feel balanced, release that, reach those arms up and fold forward, Uttanasana. Take a halfway lift, plant your palms, step back to your plank. Coming down to the knees first, elbows pull back as you drop down, tops of the feet flat, inhale, lift up, Bhujangasana. And exhale, release, tuck the toes. This time, child's pose, open the knees wide, take your hips to your heels and reach those arms out in front of you. Forehead relaxes down onto the ground. Let everything settle. Good, lift the head slightly. Walk your hands over to the right, keeping both hips heavy. You can stay here or place that left hand on top of your right and just stretch into that left side body. Breathe into that left rib cage. Gently switch sides, walking back through center, walking those hands to the left, place your right hand on top of your left and your hips heavy. Stretching through that right side body, breathing into that right rib cage. And coming back to center. Good, inhale, coming back through tabletop and shift back to downward facing dog. Take a breath and just let it go. Good, on your next inhale, reach that right leg high. Pulling the knee into the chest, shift. Right leg reaches high on your next inhale and now use your core to step that foot between the hands this time, framing the foot with your hands, bring your back knee down. Once again, coming to the fleshy part of the knee. The knee can go past the ankle here, just shifting into that ankle flexion. Interlace your hands on top of that right knee and use that to lift the chest. Taking a breath in, relax the shoulders as you let the hips soften towards the mat. And then again, keep this left glute strong to protect your low back. Pull the belly in to stay strong through the core. From here, you're going to frame the foot once again. Start to shift your hips back about halfway. Just flex the toes and then come back through. Good. Flex the toes here. Walk your hands back to support the knee and then turn your toes away from your midline. So pushing your right heel into the ground, really flex the foot, spin the toes away and then spin the toes in. And then come back to center. Shift forward. Pick up your back knee. Reach the right leg high and release to downward facing dog. Stretch. Good, inhale, left leg reaches high. Pull the knee in towards the chest. Good, leg reaches high. And this time bring the foot between the hands. Using your hand to guide that foot. Making those little adjustments, making room for yourself. It's not going to look the same. Back knee's going to come down. Again, you can bring the top of that right foot flat and then interlace the hands on top of that left knee, finding a stretch through the top of this right hip, keeping this glute strong, protecting the hip, encouraging that left knee forward as you get light through the heart space. Get strong through the legs, relax the shoulders, and then shift back halfway, pushing your left heel into the ground. Good, shift back into that space. 
letting the hips be soft, and then shift back using your hands as support. Again, push your left heel into the mat a lot, pull the belly in, spin your toes away from you, and then spin the toes towards you and just notice what you feel. Good, come back to your center, framing that foot once again, reach the left leg high, and release, downward facing dog. Take an inhale and let it go. Start to lift the heels, bend the knees, coming down to the knees. Cross the ankles and shift your hips to the mat. Bringing yourself back to the center of the mat. Go ahead and hold on to the backs of the knees. Let that bring you onto your back as you pull your knees into your chest. Taking the hands around to the tops of the knees, just pause here. And coming back to where we began, pull that right knee into your chest as you extend the left heel down to the mat. Take that right knee up towards the armpit. And back to center. And one more time, take it up towards the bicep, up out past the rib cage. And then bring it back to center. Walk your left foot in, take your hands behind the back of your right thigh and extend the heel. Point and flex the foot a few times. And then bend the knee coming into a figure four. So placing the ankle on the knee this time, grab the back of your left thigh, bringing your left shin parallel with the ground. Just breathe. Relax the toes. If you need a deeper stretch, pull the legs closer towards you. And then keeping your grip on your left knee, take your right leg down to the mat. Pulling that left knee in and then create some space through that hip. So move the knee out to the side, past the rib cage, and then pull the knee back in towards the chest. Do that a couple times. Just notice that rotation in the hip and maybe some space we've created. Good, start to walk that right foot in as you extend the left leg. Interlace your hands behind the back of the thigh point and flex the foot, noticing the difference. Notice where your breath is now. Bend the knee, take that ankle to the knee, grab the back of your right thigh again, keeping the feet slightly flexed to protect your knee. Let that left knee kind of open as you pull the legs towards you. enjoying this work that we've done to prepare us for our final posture. Pulling both knees into your chest. Cactus or goal post the arms and keeping the knees together, gently drop your knees to the right as you look left, allowing the hips to relax and the shoulders to relax. And gently come through center, looking up and then twist to the left, keeping the gaze up or look over to your right. Coming back through to your center. Wrap your arms around your shins, bring your forehead to your knees. And we set up our Shavasana, our final pose, the way we would any other posture. So extend the legs and bring the arms down by the sides. Create that shelf with the back of the shoulder blades coming together and make those little adjustments so that you can find some true stillness here. Coming back to our breath, our connection to our breath like we did in the beginning of class. Noticing if we've created any space. Maybe we've created a loosening of some tension. And here we want to imagine feeling heavy and surrendered, but also very light, effortless. Imagining just vast space. Allowing thoughts to pass by like clouds. 
keeping the blue sky clear. Allowing everything to absorb, allowing everything to settle. On your next inhale, point your toes gently. Start to reach your arms up overhead like you just woke up in the morning stretch. And then pull your knees into your chest and gently make your way over onto one side. I'm pausing for just a moment. And gently pressing yourself up to your seat as you're ready, crossing legs in front of you or shifting onto your knees, whatever is most comfortable to find a final seated position. Just notice the difference in your body. Notice the energy and the space that this creates. Bring your hands together in front of your heart and bow your chin to your chest. We always honor ourselves first and foremost for showing up. So give yourself that grace for showing up and making the time and carving out the space for your practice. You get to keep this energy. You get to take it with you into the rest of your day, into the rest of your week. Bringing your thumbs to the forehead and take an inhale. And as we exhale, we bow in gratitude to this space, to this practice, and to all things. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining me. Remember, this is just video one, so we'll see you for the next one. Stay with it, keep practicing, and we'll see you next time.